Glad you guys are here. We're super glad you came to worship with us this morning. Glad you beat the rain in, right? Um, we are really glad that you guys are here. Uh, you guys are joining us online. Thank you for being with us as well. Uh, if you're new, make sure you type new in the comments and someone will connect with you there. And if you're visiting here, I know you've probably already heard it. I know you've heard it because I was in here. Um, but uh, if you'd hit our, our Connections Hub on the way out the door, we've got a gift we'd like to give you just for saying thanks. Or just for being here is a way of saying thanks. There we go. Um, anyway, so we are really glad that you guys are here. So let me, let me start off by asking you guys a question. Um, have you ever had someone say, uh, say uh, to you, say, just trust me, it's going to be great, right? Anyone ever, ever had that experience? Okay. Um, maybe you were out to dinner at a restaurant and, uh, and maybe it's like one you'd never been, been to before and your friend was with you and they were telling you what to order. Right, and you're like, I'm not 100% sure about this. Or, or maybe, maybe your spouse wanted to redecorate the living room and you weren't 100% on board with the uh, choice of color palette, right? Um, uh, <laughs> when I was a kid, um, I was out riding uh, four-wheelers with, with, with some friends of mine. And there, there were four of us and we were on two different ATVs. And uh, while we were out riding, one of them broke down, okay? And so we, we were a good ways from home and uh, or for, for, for my buddy's house, and we were trying to work out uh, how to get both four-wheelers back to the house, right, because we didn't want to just leave one out there, and suddenly one of my buddies, as we're kicking this around, one of my buddies says, I've got it. All right, Jay, why don't you sit on the front of the broken four-wheeler? I meant to bring a chair up here, and I forgot, um, but why don't we, uh, why don't you sit on the front of the four-wheeler, okay, of the broken four-wheeler, and, and then hang on to the handlebars behind you, and, and then put your legs on the good four-wheeler, and, and we'll, we'll hang on to your legs, and we'll just pull both four-wheelers home. <laughs> Naturally, I looked at him like you guys are looking at me right now, right? Uh, suffice to say, I have my doubts about my buddy's plan, uh, but then, then, then he said those magic words, right? He said, just trust me. It's going to be great. It's going to work great. So I trusted him. And it was great for about 45 seconds. <laughs> then, uh, then they started going too fast. And, and, and I slid off the broken four-wheeler. And then I got drugged for a bit before they realized what had happened. And then they let go. And I, then I got run over by the broken one behind me. <laughs> it wasn't great. Okay. And, and I tell you that story because every one of us has a decision to make, right? God has called all of his children, all of us, into an adventure, right, to, to, to a journey. And, and answering God's call, it can be scary, right? But, but, we, but we get to choose how we respond to his invitation, right? And how we choose, how we respond to that will have lasting implications for our lives and, and for the lives of those around us. But I can tell you, unlike my buddy's promise, when God says, trust me, it's going to be great, it will indeed be great. So today we're, we're going to see that, that, that Abram uh, was faced with, with a decision. He, he could stay where he was, okay, in, in a land that he knew, uh, with, a, with a family that he knew, or he could choose to follow God into the unknown with, with nothing but but God's promise that it's going to be great to lean on. So if you've got your Bibles, go ahead and open them up to Genesis chapter 12. That's where we're going to live. Uh, we're going to just sort of be working our way through Genesis as we get through this series or through five or six chapters in Genesis anyways. Um, and we're starting a new series today called uh, Look to the Stars. And we're going to spend the next four weeks diving into the life of Abraham. Okay, now granted, most of our series, he's going to be called Abram before God changed his name to Abraham. But uh, for, for those of you who, who didn't grow up in church, um, God chose Abraham or Abram to be uh, the, the father of the nation of Israel, right? Through Abraham's lineage, God would create the Hebrews, right? Isaac and Jacob and Moses and Joshua and all those people we read about in the Old Testament. They, they, they all came from Abraham's line, right, from his lineage, eventually leading to Jesus Christ and, and the salvation of mankind. But it all started with Abraham. We are part of Abraham's legacy, right? We're in this place because Abraham answered a call thousands of years ago, right? So we're connected. We're, st we're connected to Abraham. He was a, he's a, he's a, if you can have this, he, he's a giant in our faith, right? So much so that, that songs were written about him. Some of you might even know some of them. 
right? Y'all with me? Let's do it. Father Abraham had many sons. That's right. Come on, come on. Many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you, right? So let's just praise the Lord, right? I'm just kidding. We'll stop there. No, but, 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 but before all of that, right, b- before the legacy, before the songs, before God changed his name, there was a man named Abram, and he was faced with, the, with a decision to make. So let's dig in. Genesis chapter 12, we're going to start in verse 1. It says this, he, the Lord said to Abram, go from your land, your relatives and your, fam- and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse anyone who treats you with contempt. And all the peoples of the earth will be blessed through you. So Abram, Abram was a man from the city of Ur, okay, which, is, which was in the Babylonian Empire. He, he wasn't an Israelite, okay? There, there were no Israelites. Uh, he, uh, but but, but God was, was going to raise up a people for himself, and he chosen Abraham to be the father, which is why we just sang Father Abraham, right? He chose Abra, Abram to be the father of those people. So, so God comes to Abram, and he calls him out, okay? And he says, Abram, I want you to leave your land, and I want you to go to a place that I'm going to show you. Now, now before, before we dig in further, can we just stop for a minute and, and put ourselves, I want everyone to, we're going to, Step out of our shoes, and we're going to step into Abram's shoes here just for a minute, okay? You're a Babylonian, okay? And you've grown up in a culture that was rampant with with, with idol worship, right? You probably, you'd probably heard a few musings about this creator God, right? But but you didn't grow up worshiping him, right? You didn't, uh, you you, you didn't grow up learning about him. You didn't grow up worshiping him, this, this. And then out of the blue, this creator God that you'd kind of heard people talk about, this creator God speaks to you out of nowhere. And he tells you to leave everything you've ever known. That's scary. That's a scary proposition, right? Take off, leave all the things that you know, leave all the things that you're comfortable with, leave your land, that's your financial security, right? Leave your relatives, and in that day, most people lived in like tight-knit family groups, Right, so your family was your primary source of protection and of social connectivity. Right, walk away from that. Leave your father's house. To leave your father's house was to walk away from your personal identity. Right, part of uh, the the standard greeting uh, in, in in that time was to introduce yourself by saying, "My name is Jay, son of Jim." Right, that that was a part of it. Right, you were that's how people identified who you were, who your parents were. You walked down that line. That was a big deal. To go out from your father's house was a really big deal. And God is asking Abram to leave all those things, to walk away from everything that defined Abram as Abram. Right, God had something new for Abram, a new people, a new nation, a new identity. But in order to receive it, Abraham has to shed his old one, has to shed his old identity. And that's scary. That can be real scary to walk away from what we know. Sometimes the, the comfortability of the known, even if it's not great, even if it's okay, right, is, 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 is scary to, when, to step into something that could be even better, but we don't know what it is, the unknown. That, that can be scary. But at the core of this call, this, this call that God is making, at the core of this call to go is a call to trust, Right, God is, uh, what, what God is really asking Abram to do is to trust him. But, but God doesn't, it's important to note that it, he, God doesn't just call Abram to trust just for trust's sake, right? His call, God's call comes with a promise. Look at verse two. God says, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. God tells Abram that that he's going to bless him, that he's he's going to make him uh, into a great nation, that he's going to make Abram's name great. And then then he throws in at the end that that Abram himself will be a blessing. I'm not just going to do all these things for you. You are going to be a blessing. But there's an issue. At this point, when God comes to Abram, Abram is 75 years old. I know people lived longer back then, but 75 is starting to get up there anyways, right? Um, and and he, he was, I'm not that, y'all know what I'm saying, 
you know what I'm saying. And I'm fixing to drive it home right here. It's in my notes, right? So look, he, he was an older man. How could, how could he become a great nation? I mean, isn't nation building something that, that you, is like sort of a long-term thing, right? It's like a long-term goal. So it seems like if, if you wanted to build a nation, you'd get started with that task when you were a little bit younger, right? Uh, that, that's a, a lifetime investment kind of thing. Kind of like, it's kind of like retirement. Like if I wanted to start uh, if, I did, if I waited until I was 75 to start saving for retirement, I don't care how good my investment guy is. At some point, he's gonna look at me and be like, bro, you're a little behind, right? That's, but it's, and Abram, it's not just that. Abram, Abram was just one man, right? How could one man who wasn't a king or anything or uh, become, uh, become a great name in, in a world that has so many other great kings and leaders and empires, How's, what, how's that gonna happen? And as for being a blessing, and, and, and we read that, okay? We read this story because we can look back, right? We, we have the whole canon of scripture. We know how things played out. We read that and understand that the blessing that God's referring to is the, the entrance of Emmanuel, of Jesus, of God with us into the world through Abram. We read that, we understand that, but in that moment, Abram didn't know that. He didn't know that at all. All he knew for sure was that the creator God was calling him. And if he followed, God said that, that he would bless him. God's call on Abram was clear and decisive. Right? Abram knew exactly what was being asked of him. Okay, it wasn't go build a nation, it wasn't any of that. It was Abraham, go. I need you to go. Just trust me and go. There was no doubt that God wanted Abraham to go. Right? There was no doubt. He, he invites Abram into something. And it's no different for you and me. Right? God calls all of us. If you're here this morning and you profess Christ as your Savior, if, if you're a Christian, God has called you. Every one of you. He's, he's, he's invited you. He, he, he invites you into something. And he invites you into something specific. Right? Now, what that call is, can vary from person to person, right? But a new job, uh, maybe, maybe a new relationship, maybe to, to walk away from something that, that, that's slowing us down or holding us back in our walks with Jesus. Maybe, maybe, just, maybe it's a, a renewed commitment to follow him, right? We're all called to different things, but we're all being called, right? We're all being invited into an adventure. And the question for us today is, how are we gonna respond to his invitation, right? Are, 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 we, are we packing our bags? like we're gonna see Abram do here in just a second, or are we dragging our feet? Let's keep reading in verse four. So Abram went, as the Lord had told him, and Lot with him. Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. He took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, all the possessions that they had accumulated, and, and the people they had acquired in Haran, and they set out for the land of Canaan. When they came to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land at the site of Shechem at the Oak of Morah. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. So God invites Abram and us right into his story. In Abram's case, that means packing up and heading out into the world. But, but those first three words, guys, are huge. And it's easy when you read this to just sort of blow by them, but I don't want us to miss them. Abram, God said, Abram, get up and go. And then Abram got up and went. So Abram went. He started packing, guys. And verse five says, he took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated and, and the people they had acquired in Haran, and they set out for the land of Canaan. He had a lot of stuff to get together, right? He had a lot of stuff to pack up. You guys ever moved? It's a pain, right? He had a lot of stuff to pack, so he gets to packing. And Abram was a he, he was a relatively wealthy man, right? He had, he had a lot of people and possessions that he had to get packed in order to, in order to be able to get going, right? So he got going, but, but God didn't call Abram because he was wealthy, okay? That, that, that's, that's not why God called him. And I think sometimes we look at other people and, and we can think, or, or, or we think that we can see why that God would choose them. I don't know if you guys do this or not, but you look at somebody and you're like, well, they're so smart. Right? Or, 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 or they're so kind, or, or, or they're so well-spoken, or, or they've got so many resources, or, or, or they have 
such a big sphere of, of influence. Of course God would call them. That makes complete sense. But, but there's something else about Abram that made him the perfect man for the job. It was his heart. It wasn't his money. It wasn't his possessions. It wasn't his family. It was his heart, specifically his faith. In Hebrews chapter 11, in verse 8, it says, By faith, Abraham, when he was called, obeyed and set out. Uh, set out for a place that he was going to receive as an inheritance. He went out even though he didn't know where he was going. We're gonna talk about the second half of that verse here in a minute, but, but it was Abram's faithful heart. That's why God chose to call him, right? God, God had positioned Abram to be, uh, to be able to undertake this journey, but it wasn't his money. It wasn't, it wasn't his family or his abilities that made him useful. It was his faith. His willingness to trust and believe that if God was directing him to do something, that, that, that God would make sure that things went exactly the way they were supposed to go on the back end. That's why God chose him. Because God said, Abram, go. And Abram said, all right, I'm going to trust you. And he took off. That's why he was called. I think so many of us, I think so many times we, we view ourselves as, as not capable or, or, or not not, not the best choice when it comes to work in the kingdom, like we're, like we're unqualified to serve or we're unqualified to minister or to be used in the kingdom. I mean, we read this story and, and we see that Abram, Abram uh, was wealthy and we think, well, that makes sense, right? God needed someone who was wealthy to be able to make this thing happen, to take a journey like this. You gotta have money, right? You gotta have possessions. You gotta be able to, to make this thing. So that makes sense to us, but we think that like God needed someone who was wealthy to be able to make this thing happen, so he chose Abram. But Abram was, <laughs> hear me say this, if you walk away from nothing else, uh, this, if you take nothing else away from this this morning, take this away, guys. Abram wasn't chosen because of what he could bring to the table. God doesn't choose you because of what you can bring to the table. Abram was called because of his heart. That's how God works, folks. When God, when God's, uh, and there's another story in scripture when, when, when God is choosing the new king of Israel, becomes David, he sends a prophet by the name of Samuel. And when God sent Samuel to anoint the new king of Israel, look at what he tells Samuel in uh, 1 Samuel 16. Uh, he says, but the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or his stature because I have rejected him. Humans do not see what the Lord sees for the humans see what's visible, but the Lord sees the heart. So God chose David to be the king of Israel because he was a great man, right? no. That's not why God chose David, right? When God chose David, he was the least of eight brothers. His own, his own father had forgotten about him when Samuel shows up to anoint the new king. Samuel's like, where are your kids at, right? His dad's like, they're right here. And then Samuel goes down the list. He's like, is this it? And he goes, wait a second. You know, there's, there's another one. Right? And then he goes on to say, but he's, he's little. He's out in the field. Like, that's not, he was out tending sheep. His own father had forgotten about him. Right? But God chose David for the same reason that he chose Abram and for the same reason that he chooses you and the same reason that he chooses me because of our willingness to follow, because of our faith in him. That's why God chooses. Not because we're smart, not because we're good speakers not because we're super organized, because of our faith. I've learned something from watching my kids play sports over the past several years. Uh, most of the coaches that, that, that they've been on teams with, um, I was surprised to learn, aren't overly concerned with talent or ability. Uh, the thing that I hear them say, and by say I mean yell at the top of their lungs, um, is I wanna see you fighting. I wanna see that you want it. I wanna see that you're in there. I'd rather see you in there fighting and have no idea what you're doing, then half doing it. That's all they want to see. If you can fight, you can work with that, right? Guys, God, God doesn't look at our skill set when he chooses who he calls. He does position us, okay? He did position Abraham. Abraham was in a position to, make that, uh, to, to, to take that step. God had positioned him, but God uses those whose hearts are willing to follow. Everything else, the external stuff, God's more than capable of taking care of that. I mean, he, he created you, right? He knows exactly how you're built. He knows exactly what you're best equipped for. You were already, already perfectly positioned to be used by God right where you are. 
in your school, at your job, in your friendships. My question for us is, are we willing to be used? Even if it means taking a long trip to get there, because sometimes it is a long journey. Abram was in for a long trip, and it was an unknown destination. Right? That's the second part of Hebrews 11. It makes that clear. He says, he went out even though he did not know where he was going. So Abram packed, his, he packed up his entire life, his family, and he hit the sand right? without, without a final destination in mind. Look at verses seven and eight. This is as, at, as he's traveling, as they're going. The Lord appeared to Abram and said, to your offspring, I will give this land. He built an altar there to the Lord who, who, who had appeared to him. From there, he moved on to the hill country east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and I on the east. He built an altar to the Lord there and he called on the name of the Lord. So something begins to happen. Uh, as Abram is traveling, as he goes, he packs everything up and they, they start their journey. As he continues to follow the call God's placed on his life, God begins to refine that call and to refine the promise that he made. He begins to narrow it down to give, to give Abram a, a, a better picture of what it is that, that God has promised him. Right? He traveled about 400 miles through Canaan. Okay, and eventually to a city called Shechem where he sets up next to the, oak of, of, or to the oaks of Morah and then God shows up right there. He shows up uh, right outside Shechem and he tells Abram that all the land that he's traveling through will one day belong to his children. Right, this, this promised land, okay, is the term for it. This, this promised land will one day be the home for the entire nation of Israel. And if you read through the rest of this story, before Abram's journeys are all over, because he winds up going all the way down to Egypt and then coming back, before all of his journeys are over, Abram will have traveled the length and the breadth of the entire promised land. He will have seen it all. He would see the land that, that it will one day be the home for his descendants, Right, God, God is through this process as Abram is following him. God, God, God's encouraging Abram and, and, he's, and he's blessing him with clarity. He's opening his eyes and saying, this is what's gonna happen. This land that you're looking at right now to the east and to the west, it's all gonna belong to your kids one day. Right? He's, he's blessing him with clarity as Abram pursues him. That's the way, I, in, in my life anyways, that's the way I've seen God work it out. Like God, God called me to ministry when I was 15. I answered the call, and, and as I pursued God, as I pursued his call on my life over the years, he's narrowed, he's slowly narrowed and, uh, and, and, and focused and, and adjusted that call, right? I remember when I was 15 and I said yes, I said, I said, God, I'm in. This is what you want me to do. I'm in. Just please don't call me to be a missionary or be a preacher, And, and uh, at, at this point in my life, I've done both, right? So, the, but as I look back along my journey, right, I can see God refining his call on me, right? The, from, from, my fir, uh, from, from my first part-time position as a worship pastor to, uh, to, to the year I spent traveling uh, with, with orphans from U Uganda and Nepal and ministering to churches and raising money for, for the, the children's homes um, across the world to, to my call here to the crossing, to this moment right here on stage, right? God, God has refined and he's clarified and he's narrowed the call on my life as I pursued that call, as I've said yes, as I've stepped out. He's narrowed and, 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 and refined the call of my life. It's kind of like um, geocaching. This is not a hard write, I promise. Um, and, and does anyone know what I'm talking about? Anyone ever been geocaching before? So if you're unfamiliar, it's basically treasure hunting with an iPhone. Um, so people will go in the woods or wherever, and they, they hide little, little caches, little boxes or whatever. And they, they can be under a park bench. They can be uh, on the opposite side of a cemetery, wherever. They just hide these little caches, and they put stuff in them. Right? It's usually just little trinkets or whatever. And then there's a notepad and people, uh, when you find it, you open it up and then there'll be a little pad and you just kind of write your initials and the date that you found the cache, as it were. And so the way it works is you pop your phone out, you open up the app and, uh, and then you find them. They're listed all over the app. You click it and then you, you go find whatever the, the, the cache happens to be. And so Rylan and I, uh, I'd never done it before. 
and Ryland and I decided that we were going to go ge geocaching a few weeks ago, and, and we found a few caches around town. They were no big deal. It was fun, you know, walking around, but then we decided we were going to go big, right? So we wanted to go for one that was hidden deep in East Fork Park, okay? So we started, right? When we got in the car, uh, I popped open my phone, and my phone told us that we were 12 miles away from the cache, Right? So we got in the car and we started driving and we reached a point where we couldn't drive the car anymore and we had to get out and we started walking through the woods. Right? And then my phone told us that we were like a mile and a half, three quarters of a mile, or about a mile and a half away and we started walking. And it wasn't on a trail, it wasn't near anything like that, so we were like deep in East Fork, off the trail, okay? Um, and, uh, and so we're working our way through briars and through thick patches of scrub brush and stuff. It was, it was fun. It was pretty brutal, but it was fun. And then we were three quarters of a mile away. And then we kept pressing on. Then we were half mile. And then uh, we kept following the map, right? Then we were a quarter mile and then 500 feet, right? And then 100 feet and then 10 feet. And I know you guys are, the suspense is rising, right? <laughs> but, and, but the thing is, as we got closer to the cache, the map narrowed our direction, right? It went from miles to portions of a mile down to feet, and it slowly walked us down. It focused our attention until we got right on top of the cache. Our reward? A rock? An old action figure? A bracelet? And a lot of sweat. And the process, that process, it's not that different with God, right? As we, as we pursue God's call in our life, be it big or small, God begins to narrow the focus, right? He, he opens doors for us. He closes doors. He begins to adjust our hearts, begins to change our passions and, and our desires as we get closer to what it is that he's called us to do. We never, and, and we'll never completely arrive. Hear me say that, right? We'll never completely arrive on the call that God has on our lives, but not, not until we see him in glory because that's the way he originally designed it, right? But but in this life, the more that we pursue his call on us, the clearer that call becomes. And that should give us hope. The more that we pursue, that should give us hope. But guys, even when we're not 100% sure what the destination is, that God will refine it, that it will become clear as we walk. That's why clarity isn't required to answer the call. We just need to answer it. We need to say yes. God says, go, all right, I'm gonna go. You'll narrow it down when I get down there. Like Abram did. We say yes. And then we trust God to narrow it down as we follow the path that he's laid out for us. Let me ask you a question. What would your life look like if you made the choice today to start saying yes? To start saying yes to God when he invites you into his plan? Instead of trying to get like the, 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 the perfect picture of the destination. I know for type A'ers, this is a terrifying question. I understand that, right? But, but what would your life look like if we started saying yes, if that was our instinctual response when God called us into something? If instead of trying to get the perfect picture, we just said yes and we started walking. I said yes when God called me to ministry at 15. I wasn't real sure what it was gonna look like. And 26 years later, I am part of the best faith family that I know. I love you guys. There's nowhere else, nowhere else that I'd rather be than right here where God's led me as he's narrowed his call on my life. What would God do? What would he do in and through your life, in, in our church's life, if, if we started saying yes? God would make you a blessing like he did Abram, He'd make you a blessing to the world around him. And then your faith would grow, right? By leaps and bounds as God showed up in those little moments like he did with Abram as he was journeying through, as God showed up in your life over and over again as you journeyed, as he refined and clarified the mission that he called you to. We'd never be the same. You'd never be the same. And then as a family, We'd never be the same because, I don't know if you guys realize this, but God's work in you is, is a work in us, church. That's what being part of a family is. As God changes your life, it begins to change the lives of those in your family. So here's the ask today. Here's what I want us to do. I wanna talk to three different groups of you, okay? I'm assuming there's three different groups here. Um, if you're here today and you'd say, Jay, man, 
that hit home, I gotta tell you, I, I don't have to ask what God's inviting me into because I already know. Like I know, I know exactly what God wants me to do. He's been telling me for a while and I've been waiting for the picture to get perfectly clear or I've been waiting for how it's gonna, how it's gonna turn out. Like I know what he wants me to do. I don't, I don't have to ask. Well, let me encourage you. Start your journey. Stop dragging your feet, pack your bags and step into God's invitation. It's gonna be great. I don't have to promise, God already has, right? And every call that God makes comes with a promise. Deuteronomy 31 says, be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified or afraid of them for the Lord your God is the one who will go with you. He will not leave you or abandon you. He's not gonna, God's not gonna call you out onto a ledge and then leave you standing there by yourself, right? He'll go with you. God will be right there by your side as you go. Ask God this morning, ask him to give you the faith to believe that. That's what God's after, the faith. Ask him to give you the faith to believe that and then step into it and do it today. Don't wait till tomorrow, don't wait till next week. Do it today. And if you're, if you're here and, uh, and you're not sure what God's inviting you into today, my encouragement to you is ask him. It may seem a little basic, but just ask him. God, what are you calling me to? What do you want me to do? You don't have to ask for what it's gonna look like five years from now, just being like, God, what is it you want me to do right now? And remember, uh, we don't have to have complete clarity to answer the call. God looks at the heart. Are you willing to trust him? You start there. God, I'm willing to do whatever it is you're gonna ask me to do. Start from there and then start taking your steps. Take some time this week and seek after God's call. Spend some time in prayer asking him, asking him in every area of your life, right? God's call isn't always to pull up stakes and move uh, to a faraway land, right? It may be to step into something with your family. Maybe there's like a tension point in your family that you've been avoiding that you know you need to step into and that you know you need to address, right? Maybe he's calling you to that. Maybe, maybe God's calling you to start bringing, uh, bringing him into your, in, into your friendships, right? Maybe it's time to, to, to broach spiritual things with that friend that you know doesn't know Jesus. Maybe, maybe you need to start representing Christ in your school, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what, that, what God's calling you into, but I know he's calling you into something. So seek him out. Ask God, where, ask God where it is that he wants you to respond and then do it. Then step out. Step into it. God will be with you all the way. And then lastly, um, maybe, maybe you're not sure what God's calling you into because you've never said yes to him, Right? As I, as I talked this morning, uh, maybe the Holy Spirit's like revealed to you that this whole call of God doesn't make sense to you because you've never responded to the first and most important invitation that God makes, right? That, that invitation into relationship with Jesus, right? That, that relationship that, that is unlike anything that, that, that you've ever experienced before. Today's your chance to step into that. We're gonna worship here in just a second. We're gonna sing and we'll have people at the crosses and if that's something that you feel the Holy Spirit calling you to do, just like I'm calling those that, that would profess Christ as their savior this morning to step out, I'd ask you to do the same thing, to just take that step. All God's looking for is faith. He'll take care of the rest. But we'll have people at the crosses and they will pray with you uh, about whatever it is you, wanna, you need prayer for. If you'd like to pray um, about what it means to enter into a relationship with Jesus, they can do that. If you're in the middle of struggling with something God's calling you to or there's some fear there, that's Fear of the unknown is natural. They, they are there. They will pray with you, ask God to strengthen you, minister to you. But as we sing, they'll be there. And my last challenge is for everyone in the room this morning. Uh, I wanna challenge you to say yes this week to one thing that God invites you into. Just one thing. Right? It could be big, it could be small, it could be as simple as asking someone, you know, you feel the Holy Spirit prompt you and then asking someone how you can pray for them this week. But, but say yes, whatever it is. As soon as you feel that invitation, as soon as you feel God saying, hey, can you want to? Yep, I'm good, let's do it. You know, whatever that might be. But say yes to one thing this week. I want you to do it and then I want you to watch. I want you to watch what God does in you 
as you step into that, and then I want you, I want you to see what God does through you as a result of you stepping in to that. So I'm gonna pray, and then we're just gonna worship, we're gonna sing, people will be at the cross, if you'd like, some, like someone to pray with you, you can stand up and head over there, and they'll be hanging around after service as well, but let's do it, let's, let's say yes and step in. We're all been, we've all been invited. Let's pray. God, we come before you today. We thank you, Lord, that you have called each of us into something. Lord, that you're working a plan and that we get to be a part of that, God. But that plan comes with a promise. Just like Abram, Lord, as, as he stepped out in faith and followed you, Lord, you directed and you guided, Lord. And I, I ask you, Father, if you would give us that faith this morning to step out and to trust that you'll narrow the call as we go. Lord, I pray for those here that, that have been struggling with a call that you've placed on their lives, Lord, or, or, or struggling with, with, with the trust side of it. God, I ask you if you would, if you would bring strength. I ask you if you would bring peace. Lord, that we would know that we worship a God who will never leave us, who will never forsake us. And when you ask us to do something, you're standing right there with us as we step into it. Father, Lord, we lift your name high. We give you praise and we give you glory. And we thank you for allowing us to gather in this place this morning to worship a God who calls, who calls us into something. Lord, give us the faith to trust you that it's gonna be great. We pray these things in your son's name. And everyone said? You wanna stand and sing with us as we sing this last song?